Hello, all my fellow writers, Sarah Vitale, Wild Boar, at your service from Later in Life Productions. Today, I'm bringing you another episode of Wild Boar Wisdom, where I'm going to show you how you can take your Save the Cat structure and put it into an awesome template to use in Final Draft that will make your writing tighter and easier and will make your revisions an absolute dream. Let's dive in Wild Boar style. Okay, so here we go. We're going to be working with Save the Cat structure for this template and it's a three act structure. This is what we're going to create, this beautiful color coded story map and beat board that we can apply directly to our story. So before we get started, if you're not familiar with Save the Cat and you need a little bit of review, we've got a video for that. Go ahead and uh, pause this now and make sure that you catch up on all your Save the Cat beat points. I do a nice video with Michael Jackson's Thriller that breaks it down for you and shows you exactly what each beat point is. So before we actually get started, let's take a look at what our final template's gonna look like. For advanced Final Draft users, this might be all you need. So in our beat board, we're gonna create structure points for each beat of the Save the Cat structure. I've divided mine into columns, first act, second act, and third act and I have a specific way that I color code them that works for me that I'm gonna show you. Those are attached to my story map as structure points. They show up as boxes on the top and they're a nice reference point for me as I'm doing my writing. Then also at the bottom here, I've added um, status quo boxes for my characters and then into the new world of the second act boxes and then elixir boxes as well. Uh, and those are attached to my story map, and since they are beats, they will show up on the bottom like such. And any notes that I fill in will appear there, the first two lines will appear there for me. It's a nice reference. Okay, if you're not an advanced user, don't worry. We're going to go through this one step at a time, starting with our document settings. Okay, so Save the Cat is set up on a 110-page structure, so we're going to go ahead and set our document for that. The first thing we're going to do is go into our View tab and make sure that we have the story map view turned on. I like to set mine around 50% so that I can see the entire bar on one screen, but you can set yours wherever it's comfortable. And you see that it automatically gives us a 120 page target. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my document tab. I'm gonna do my target script length, and I'm gonna set that for 110 pages. And you can certainly set your target length, whatever is your actual target length. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to go into my beat board. That's in my view tab here. Right now we're on page view, we'll go to beat board. And as you can see, it tells us to double click to create a beat. So as we start building our structure map, I can double click to create a beat. And I'll show you what that does here. <clears throat> now I have a beat, but what I actually need is a structure point. So I can right click on this and convert it to a structure point. Very easy to do. Or I can just right click anywhere on my beat board and create a new structure point instead of creating a beat. Then I'll go ahead and start creating my columns, act one on my far left. I like to cascade them, but you can make it however is comfortable for you. I like to have the edge stick out so I don't lose them when I'm tabbing around. And now I'm going to fill in my first beat, the, my first save the cat uh, beat. I'm not going to beat the cat. So we're going to put opening image here. And I like to make my structure points for act one a rainbow. So I'm going to turn this red by right clicking and selecting red. I could go to custom and make it really bright red if I preferred. And now I'm just going to grab it and drag it up to my story map to match up with the target page that I want it to be on. Opening image is gonna be page one. And you can see it's stuck there, gave me a little box. And if I change the color back to the red I like, it will change the box. And it shows me the target page right there in the top right corner. Now I can move on to my next point, which will be orange for me. And on and on until you have done so for every single structure point and save the cat. I've dragged them all up to my story map uh, if I change any of the colors, let's pick one here. So let's take High Tower Surprise and let's turn it aqua. And you'll see that it will change the color on my story map as well. So now my beat board 
structure points are color coded onto my story map. I have them in three columns for Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. And I've color coded them in a way that makes sense for me so that I can easily identify what is matching up with each beat. I can move my beats around on my story map. It won't change my beat board, but if I'm writing and I find I want to move a certain point, I can just pick it up and drop it. Okay, now that I've done all of my structure points, I'm going to create some beats down here at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to call this one the Heroes Status Quo. So I'm going to go ahead and create a beat for each of my characters opening status quo. Remember, Act 1 is all about your status quo. I'm going to make mine red because they match up for me and my brain with the opening image that way. And then I'm going to drag them and drop them onto my map and you'll see they appear on the bottom because they are beats, not structure points. I'm going to go ahead and make a new beat for each one of my characters. And I'll do status quo, then I will move on to the new world for act two. So a box for each of the characters new world. And then I will do the same thing for act three. What's the elixir that they found and how is it going to affect them? And I will drag these all right up to my story map so that when I'm writing, I can reference. Now see this one dropped on top of each other. So it's really more um, convenient for me to separate them out next to each other like that. Okay, so fast forward, we've done it all. We're putting our elixir boxes up here at the end of act three. And we're just creating a gorgeous color-coded story map that's gonna tell us what our page count target should be and when our different events want to take place as we've mapped them out in our story, according to Save the Cat structure. Once you've completed all that, you can go ahead and hover and you can see the information pops up there for you. It's a really, I figured maybe you guys could use a break for a second. It's a lot, but you know what? Once you master this technique, you can really pick out points in your story that are messing with your flow so much easier and just click and drag and drop them around. All right, come on, let's finish this. Now all that's left is to add your genius and you can start just about anywhere um, literally anywhere that you want to start. Different people have different ways of crafting the story. I myself use different methods depending on the story. I'm gonna go ahead and start by just filling in my my characters boxes. What's their status quo? What's the new world? Um, so I'm gonna give this hero And now you can see when I hover over, that information appears in the box for me. Now I can go ahead and start filling in. And when we're done, dun dun dun, drum roll please. So now when I go back into my page view, my story map is at the top and all of my color coded information is here. I can zoom in take a closer look at my story map if I want to really see what page I'm on. Uh, it gets a little hard at the 50%. Again, I can move my structure points from here if I decide I want to target a different page for that particular event. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure you save it, right? You can save it as a document if you want. I like to save mine as a template. Just go into Save as Template and type a name for it and save it in My Templates. Let's call it new save the cat. And now if I do create a new document from template under my templates, here it is, all of the templates I've created. And I can open it and I can apply it to another story. Now here's a script that I've already been working on um, and I've started to fill in some scenes so you can see some information popping up with this with different structure points and see this gray line here? So I haven't worked anything past that page. So the beginning of my bar, um, see this nice color coding that's happening here? These are actually my scenes, and I'm gonna show you how to color code these. These are my scenes, and they're telling me very clearly, it's a very clear visual indication whether or not I'm matching up with the structure points because the scenes are color coded to the structure points. So what we're gonna do is go into our scene view here, and you can see I've assigned each of these scenes a color according to what structure point they match up to. And uh, if we go all the way, 
Now, when you first start your script, these are all going to be white. So I've gone ahead and assigned each of my scenes the color that matches the corresponding structure point that I've created in my template. This is why I like to use rainbow colors. It makes it really easy for me, but you should do it the way that makes sense to you so that when you get into the scene view and you color your scenes, they match up with your structure points colors. You can see here the scene is the kitchenette. It matches up with my theme color. My theme point is orange. The scene is then orange. Same thing with my setup. Those are all going to be yellow scenes um, and on and on. And you can see in the bar of the story map where the scenes uh, colors actually will show up for you, making it really easy to line up your structure points and see how your page targets are doing. Now if I want to add a new scene, that's easy to do. I right click insert new scene and I'm going to, for this I'm going to put need pages here. Uh, this is part of using the story map. I can see where I'm short on pages by comparing the color of the bar to where my structure points line up. And then I will color code this as what I want it to be. Um, so I want this to be Storm in the Castle. I'm going to make it that light green color of my structure point. I might even change my High Tower Surprise color by going back into my beat board. So here's my structure points that we created. I'm going to decide to make my high towers, let's see, let's make it purple. Now when I go back to my scene view here, oops, scene view here, I can go ahead and make my need pages or my storming the castle. Uh, which one was I gonna do? I can make this high tower surprise. There it is. Now it matches the color of the scene that I selected. All right, so let's take a look at how we can use this to make our revisions even smoother. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do open new from template and we're gonna pull up that template that we spent so much effort making. Now I'm gonna paste my script in here, whatever it is, my own that I'm doctoring or somebody else's I'm working on, I'm just gonna paste it in. And you'll see that the scenes show up. The scene headers will show up on my story map, of course, but they're all white. They're not color-coded to my structure points. So we go into our scene view, and we're just gonna start from the top. And I like to do this after I've already had a couple reads of the script, if it's not my own work. I'm just gonna start color coding what I think the scenes match up to. Red for opening image, orange, and again, here's where rainbow color comes in handy for my particular way that my brain works. And I will just go through and do all of those. We'll fast forward here for you. All right, now it's really easy to see where things aren't fitting and I can just click and drag, I'm not gonna save, just click and drag them. That green one should have been after the yellow and we'll go through the whole script that way and start moving things around. And this can really help you find any problems with your flow. And I will just continue this way, moving. And you can see my story map bar, the scenes are filling in the colors that they belong to. Here's my midpoint switch. Um, here's my bad guys close in. That's okay, I'll leave it in that order and continue on. Um, as I was saying, my bar here is filling in the colors that I've assigned to the scenes and helping me to match up where my structure points are in the wrong place in the story or your structure points if I'm working for you. And we'll just continue on this way, going through each of our scenes and adjusting their position. Final draft is really easy. You can just drag and drop. I can reference my story map at any time to see what my scenes are, what my structure points are. You can zoom in. I have a lot of things happening um, in pages together and I want to take a closer look at those pages, I can zoom right in and go all the way up to 400 and look at those individual pages. And anything uh, on the right here of, of this, the right of, on the right of this section that's not filled in is just going to show up gray until I've color coded all of my scenes. And there they show up so pretty. Isn't that fantastic? All right, guys, well, that's it. Congratulations, you have created an amazing tool that you can use over and over again. 
Thanks for joining me. If you got something useful out of this, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. See you next time on Wild Boar Wisdom.